All right, so we're back at uh, Flipping Great Pinball. I look kind of like a raccoon because the sun's flashing on me there. But um, working on some uh, little stuff here today. I got to solder a uh, monitor for a local barcade that has new owners. Um, I've got to hang up some more art, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. But I wanted to focus on today um, is one of my little homemade project mini cabs. Um, I actually brought it up and I've been kind of messing with it. I want to. I, I really want to try to get it done as soon as possible. Um, it's just I got a million things going on and not enough time to do it. So I'm going to kind of show you the cab, kind of explain the backstory to you, some future plans for it, and then uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Let's check it out. All right, so here is a little mini cab. Um, it's kind of a, an awesome little thing. It's about I don't know, maybe three feet tall, three three and a half feet. It's hard to say exactly, but. Uh, the backstory on this was basically there's a local Florida um, forum of uh, pinball and arcade collectors and a guy uh, had limited tools and uh, some wood and started talking to a Japanese collector overseas about these cabs um, and decided he wanted to try to make one so you know he did a fantastic job I, I wish I could take credit for uh, for all this stuff but uh, basically I, I got the cab um, as it sits without, um, you know, I put casters on and I did all the the wiring so far and I put the monitor and stuff like that in and yeah, it is an LCD, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, he did everything, you know, with, with a jigsaw and basically some screwdrivers and, you know, it came out amazing. It's, it's half inch wood. I'm not sure if he used pine or, or what, but it's all half inch. He did a really good job painting it. It's got a couple little nicks here and there, but I'm going to clean all that stuff up. But, uh, you know, he did, he did a really good job. He had little speaker slots down here. Uh, the control panel, I actually had, there's a, a metal guy across the street who cut the panel for me. But it's just some steel I'm going to wind up, you know, cutting a joystick hole. Probably going to do four buttons and then start over here. Um, this is all metal here. That's rolled metal original control panel. I think this is off of a Mahjong arcade. The guy actually paid to have one imported from Yahoo Japan. Uh, he cut new MDF things and I just threw some cheap black paint. I'll, I'll go over these. I'm going to try to figure out where he got this half inch uh, T-molding here and try to get some more of that to do these edges properly. But, um, you know, he did a lot of this stuff. And again, I have a computer just sitting in it now. But, uh, you know, he has a slot here for the wiring to come through. The control panel bolts here. I just have it kind of sitting on here now because i got to drill some stuff here. Uh, speakers eventually will be two four inch speakers there. I'm probably going to have to decase this computer. It's a, an i uh, first gen i5 2500. Probably going to have to take it out because the case is kind of big. You see I could have to take the rear panel off. But we'll have the, the board mounted in there nicely and, and have an audio amp and everything. Um, right now I have a 19 inch uh, LCD in it with the scan line generator. And my goal is, you can kind of see it's off center, I kind of just eyeballed it so I got to redo it, but my goal is I want this to be um, a full MAME setup where I can actually rotate it and play horizontal and vertical games. So right now I've got it on a, a VESA wall mount, so my plan is to mount that onto a square piece of wood with four bolts that come through the actual mounting board, and then basically vertical games, you'll lift the monitor out, put it over the four bolts with some wing nuts on them, tighten them up. If you want to play horizontal games, you loosen the wing nuts, lift it, turn it, put it back on, tighten it back down. Um, eventually, I plan on making a couple of these, so I'll have a dedicated vertical, dedicated horizontal. But, um, you know, for right now, it's not bad. I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but I've got um, a scan line generator on it. So it actually looks pretty okay for an LCD. Granted, yeah, I know it's not going to have the color and the depth of, of a CRT, but I wanted to make this easy and light and easy to move and wheel around and kind of bring it up for friends to play and bring it up to the shop every once in a while so right now it's just running meme but again I don't know if you're able to pick up the scan lines but considering it's an LCD it's not that bad with the scan line generator but as I get more done with this um, I'll document it more and I'll probably do another video on it once it's fully done but right now it's kind of just a, a wood show with a monitor and, and the computer sitting in it but um pretty fun man I've, I put it online and a bunch of people are interested about it and I'll probably do measurements and things like that for people I got to clean that control panel up still too but uh it's a cool little cab I look forward to, to doing more stuff with it but uh, as we get more done we'll do more uh, coverage of it so we're hanging up one more NES related poster so just like last time I'm going to show you a little bit of it Based off that, 
one image there. Let me know what you guys think it is. Maybe a little bit more. It's an NES 8-bit game. What do you think? All right, so here it is. Super Mario Bros. 3. Sweet little poster. You can get a lot of these posters on eBay. I think this one was like nine or ten bucks shipped, and then the frames are like ten bucks at Walmart. So about twenty bucks. You have a sweet little thing of wall art. We're gonna add it to our party room, which we've already got our other posters hanging up. I'm gonna bring some more stuff. Tell Metal Slug's playing, but we got the uh, Metal Storm. We got our sweet Tetris one. We got Castlevania, Marvel Three. I'm gonna hang up uh, Mario probably over here, I'm thinking, but for now I'm just gonna put it over here on the wall. Kinda let it chill there, but we got a cool one. My buddy got me this for Christmas a while back. I don't know if it's gonna focus or not. Let's see. There we go. It's like a patent for an early uh, pinball game, but thank you, Mike, for that. It's awesome. Gotta hang it up in the shop. Got another little uh, one there, but I'm probably gonna put it over here, I'm thinking, above the door. And this camera's not focusing, it's not like the light in here. Here we go, probably put it up here over the wall. But here's our party room. And then again we got our uh, foam and metal uh, Space Invaders up there. It's pretty cool looking. It's another new addition to uh, Flippin' Great Pinball. Steve picked up a uh, cue ball wizard. It's actually in pretty good shape. He's coming up later tonight to uh, shop it out and do some new rubber and all that stuff. But it's pretty cool, it actually has a, a cue ball. It chills here in the middle, you hit it with the pinball. And it's got an eight ball up here. And the ball actually moves around and interacts with the game. It's pretty cool. But uh, he got this locally off of, uh, believe it or not, eBay. Found a seller was in, in Tallahassee, so he went up and made a deal and scooped it up. It's a pretty neat game. I think combined between Steve and Rob and I, we've probably had almost every uh, Gottlieb System 3 DMD game. Except for, like, uh, Barbed Wire. But uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but we're getting there. But it's a cool game. It's pretty neat. All right, back up at the repair shop. I just wanted to give everybody an update on the sword stand. It's still not done. I still have to build two more front-facing shells, one for like hammers and pry bars and stuff, but I got the top little uh, organizers. Um, I was gonna build these out of wood, but I'm lazy and don't have the right tools to cut proper boxes, so I got these two little plastic like desk organizers that I kind of screwed in, so they're flush screwed here. Uh, but for holding little stuff like pens, pencils, random drill bits, uh, drivers, just crap that I need a lot. This way I can kind of put it back there. I uh, left the space here for my tape measure because I always freaking lose my tape measure. Uh, but I got the bins here. Again, these aren't labeled right anymore. I gotta go through all that, but got all the screwdrivers there. You can see I drilled a hole for every freaking screwdriver. I still got a couple left for some specialty screwdrivers that I have. Some wood clamps there and on the back. Ugh. Trying to do this one-handed. On the back, just got the pegboards and uh, socketing wrenches, level, tape measure, measuring stick. Those tapes will probably go away for now. And then on the bottom is just storage for bigger stuff like the drill, saws and all that stuff. Keeps everything organized and easier to find and all that fun stuff. So I think the last thing I have to build for this is going to be a hot glue bin to keep all my hot glue sticks things. Right now they're just in a bag or in the uh, storage container over there. So probably build like a little like tube or something in the middle up here for those glue gun or the glue sticks to sit in. That's pretty much it. I just finished up um, reflowing this monitor for uh, local arcade bar fire beddies. Um, it's out of a Tato cab. It has Atari Tetris in it. It was having vertical issues, so I just reflowed everything to see if we could get by. Because if you hit the side of the machine, it would flicker full screen. So I don't think it's capped. I think it was just cold solder. But we're gonna plug it in later and kind of see how it how it goes. But um, other than that, that's pretty much it for this episode. We will pick it up next time, probably working more on Star Trek Next Generation pinball or, I don't know, something else. Thanks for watching.